How you doing? My name is Paul Marshall from Bodojo.com. Um, I wanted today to do a short video uh, on improving the sound of a cheap drum. Um, I have purchased two drums of the cheap and nasty variety, both identical. And as you can hear, they don't really, really sound like borons, but but these are typical of the drums that you'll buy from online retailers um, advertised as tremendous borons for 25 or 30 pounds or whatever the month is so it's it's crazy they don't sound anything like borons normally you'll find drums that sound like this will have a little motif or some sort of a, a transfer or a decal on them so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at ways of improving the sound of one of these drums I'm just going to leave one as it is so we know what it sounded like beforehand and I'm going to work on one so you can hear the differences and the changes the effect of what I'm doing so that one's a bit lower that one's a bit higher so we pick the we pick the higher one of the two to work on today so a couple of things in it immediately um, because the drum is quite small this bar um, which people insist on putting in and I have no idea what this is for but this bar um, is only about an inch and a half from the skin which means I'm trying to get my hand in there I can't really access all of the skin comfortably so the first thing going to happen is this bar has got to come out <coughs> very subtle the bar is out. Just need to remove these couple of little nails. So, and now we can access the back of it freely. So, let's hear what it sounds like. So, it's an improvement already. It's a bit of a bass tone but there's no real body in it. The only thing you notice is I can really hear the sound of my hand on the back and the front's not much better. So that's gonna transit transit also into stick noise. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take a little bit of sandpaper to this. Now I use a very fine grade sandpaper, this is 400 grid. Okay, and I've used it before as well, so it's not very uh, very sharp, you know what I mean? It's been dulled a little. So I'm just going to work very, very lightly, light pressure over the skin. And I can feel that immediately, much smoother. You need to be careful, you don't want to sand over this very edge here. The reason being that because the skin goes over the edge and you can sand through the skin very easily. So I'm staying maybe an inch in from the edge all the way around. Uh, this is going to be covered in tape eventually anyway, so it's not, it's not important that you get that bit smooth. It's mostly to do with the center of the drum. You don't need to press very hard. You can feel the drum, I mean I can hear the drum as I'm sanding, I can hear it getting more and more smooth. Okay. So, much smoother. Now let's hear that inside. Let's have another go do the inside of the drum then. a big difference there. 
there will be some dust comes off the skin and you're better if you do this um, so in such a way you don't breathe in the dust. Um, I know there have been all kinds of scares about people working with drum skins and I think if you're only working on one or two drums it's not going to be an issue. If you work with drums all the time then yes you need to be very careful about inhaling dust that comes off the skin. It's very fine and you never quite know where the animal has been and what's in the animal's skin and that kind of stuff. So um, now the thing about these skins, the ones that come in the cheap drums, is they tend to have been severely processed. Um, so it really is quite unlikely that there'll be anything of any great danger in there. Um, that's lovely and smooth already. So I can hear already, that's much quieter. That's more acceptable sounding me drum now. So, after having done some sanding, you'll be able to hear it's much quieter compared to the original on the inside. The next thing we're going to do is to add on some tape and the reason we add on tape is for a thing called edge loading. What happens is the skin is of a, a relatively uniform thickness all around. It is bounded, in other words it has a very clear and defined edge around here and when you hit the drum the vibration goes out to the edge, reflects back off that back into the middle and just keeps repeating that process which gives you kind of these overtones. You hear the sustain? for a long it holds for a long time okay so we don't want that sound in a boring obviously so the next stage is to add tape to it there you go this is the recommended tape um, it's made by scotch or 3m and it's called super 88 make sure you get the surface that you're going to tape to nice and clean get all the dust off it just pick a point and start winding it around. I'm going to, you notice at the very start of it I've cut this at an angle. Okay and the reason for this is that whenever you come to overlap you don't end up with a big square edge. So I'm also going to let it go round the edge very slightly. So most of it will be on but some of it will be round the edge. Um, and that helps keep it secure because it's actually bending around the corner. So let me pick my starting point. here and press it down nice and securely. Alright, so I'm just going to work my way around the drum, stretching the tape as I go. On this side. And there. Now you can see our cheap and nasty drum. Let's see what it sounds like. Sounds much better. This is what we started with. This is what we have. That's not a battery drum. That we drums played, the better it will get. That's not a bad skin. No, it's for a cheap drum, you know. It took me all of maybe 15 minutes, and uh, it's now a usable little instrument. So, there you go. That's how to make a silk purse out of a size ear.